Hi, I'm Serge Kolpa, I'm a founder of FitCircle.com, your ultimate bodybuilding resource. So today what I want to talk about are protein powders. There is just so many of them <laughs> and it can be very, very confusing. Let's just go for not a, a short, a very comprehensive list of them. V protein concentrate, V protein isolate, microfiltration, ultrafiltration, V protein, cross flow microfiltration, V protein, hydrolyzed V protein, egg protein, casein protein, soy protein, pea, oats, proteins, blends, protein shorts, protein bars, and so on. So when you come to a particular short, you, you will just uh, completely bewildered. You, you, you're confused, you don't know which one to go for. You try to get the most expensive one, and that one gives you diarrhea, you don't know what to do. Uh, and, uh, well, actually proteins are useful for different purposes. And we go through them one by one. So the first one is the V-protein concentrate. This uh, protein is considered to be uh, one of the staples in, uh, in bodybuilding because it is one of the cheapest proteins. It's widely available and it's got um, a slow absorption rate. So you would ideally want to take it uh, when you want to absorb your protein slowly, for example, before going to bed when your muscles repair themselves. And that brings us to another protein, uh, which is the protein isolate. This uh, uh, protein is of very high quality, but uh, the problem with this protein is that because of the uh, production uh, process, uh, some parts, uh, some microparticles of the uh, protein are just destroyed and uh, in a way some parts of the protein are not complete. However, it's still a good protein and um, it's digested between uh, like in 30 minutes to up to 3 hours. So it's recommended to take it um, during or after workout when your body needs to synthesize protein into muscles. So that brings us to microfiltration with protein. <laughs> it sounds very strange to many people, but the basic idea that it's really the best protein to take during the workout or straight after the workout because it's, um, it's um, uh, uh, consumed, it's absorbed into your muscles really, really fast. Of course, it's a bit more expensive. But, but, but still, it's a good stuff after you had a really good workout and you want to ensure that, you know, your muscles um, get repaired. And, uh, well, if you can't afford that, then probably um, they uh, will concentrate uh, instead of that. It all gives you that little bit of uh, extra when you uh, pay a little bit extra, but you don't really need it uh, as a must, only as if you can afford it, but you can survive without it. That brings us to something called, it's got a very long name, it's called cross-flow microfiltration whey protein. Well, it is the best and uh, it is the fastest uh, to be absorbed protein. And uh, at the same time, it's one of the most complete proteins because proteins, they consist of different amino acids. So it's called the complete list of those amino acids. And uh, it is what I call the golden middle between uh, very fast absorbed uh, proteins and slow absorbed proteins uh, because it's not too denatured during the uh, production process as very fast absorbing proteins. 
So when it gets in the body, it's uh, the proteins are not too destroyed uh, to be absorbed properly by your body. But at the same time, it's designed to be absorbed fast and it's not as slowly absorbed as, for example, the concentrate. And the huge advantage of it is the fact that you can deliver it when you need it. Your workout is right after a workout. Only when you worked out really, really hard and were sweating. If you were not sweating, don't bother about protein powders. Uh, you, else, you also have to exercise and really, really hard. Well, that brings us to hydrolyzed wheat protein, which is supposed to be a protein that's absorbed really fast, uh, in 20 minutes to up to in one and a half hours. Yes, it does get absorbed that fast. However, some people are not convinced with that. And the reason for it is that, you know, it's too denatured, but the particles of protein are divided too much. So some people think that as soon as it gets just into your mouth, it already uh, gets absorbed, gets digested too early, and by the time it gets to the uh, lower part of our digestive tract, uh, it, it's already good for nothing. Well, still, we are all work a bit differently, our, our bodies have different conditions, and we have different metabolic rates, it can work for some people. There is one, one other trick with uh, hydrolyzed uh, the protein. Sometimes it can give you diarrhea. <laughs> Don't worry, you are fine. You are just fine. Just go to the less denatured um, uh, proteins, for example, we concentrate on the proteins that we just talked about um, just before. So just go to them. Right, um, that brings us to another protein. And um, for example, you know, there are many proteins like egg protein powder. And it's not just dried eggs and, you know, ground it and um, uh, grind it and uh, put in tabs. No, it's so done through uh, a chemical process and it's so pure protein. There is no yolk, there is no fats in there. The reason I like it is because it's more natural protein and I myself personally believe that uh, the best way actually to get protein in your diet is to get it naturally. But, in fact, it can be so hard to get it naturally. Uh, for example, uh, when you read some fitness magazines and they give you those diets and uh, you eat there, well, you eat six times a day. Uh, for breakfast, you have salmon. For, or, uh, for lunch, you have caviar. But those diets are not really realistic and that's why uh, if you want to supplement yourself all the time, Probably uh, egg, something like egg protein would be an idea. So what's next? Next is um, casein protein. Um, it's quite expensive, but this is uh, my absolute favorite protein. Yes, many people believe uh, that, you know, get your protein straight after your workout, if not during your workout, and get it sorted so your body needs uh, protein the most at that time. But the actual fact, your muscles grow mostly when you, guess what, sleep. Actually, even if you, you know, even if you or didn't do something um, from your workout, the best way you could ensure that your workout will be most effective is to sleep. Sleep at least eight hours and sleep deeply means don't wake up in between. So your sleep is really important. And that's where casein uh, protein comes in. Because it's like um, a wholemeal version 
uh, in, a, in a protein world. It's absorbed very slowly. It's not absorbed in a spike. It's um, absorbed slowly so that during the night, during your sleep, your body gets little bits of it rather than getting the whole load of it in the first half an hour and then just converting most of it into fat or energy or something else. It just feeds the system slowly. And I also make sure myself that uh, before I get any other protein, I have casein protein because uh, that's when your muscles grow during your sleep and casein proteins are the best for them. Well, that leads us to other uh, proteins that are like nut proteins and so on. Uh, but the thing is about those proteins that are not well researched. They might be still viable, uh, but because there is, there is just not enough research on them. You can still try them, see how it goes. Well, the last protein that I wanted to mention, and actually I wanted to mention uh, for the reasons that don't take it, is a soy protein. There is a lot of contradictory research in soy protein, and some people even accuse soy protein of cancer. <laughs> but there is one fact about soy protein that you need to know, really. Yes, Chinese, Koreans, Japanese... Uh, eat lots of soya, but the soya they eat is fermented, fermented. The soya that um, um, manufacturers put in different products and uh, well, soy powder, uh, soy protein, it is not fermented. And in China, um, those religious monks, uh, they actually ate not fermented soya to suppress sexual desire so that there is less testosterone in the system and you need testosterone as you know for bodybuilding so that your hormonal balance is upset so that's what they used it for i think that should be enough for you not to have soy products even and the reason they're pushing it is because soy protein, the plant protein, and it's the cheapest protein there. So they say here is the protein, and they, for example, they say here is a blend of the protein and then show some good proteins there, but then you find out most of it is the soy protein, and they still charge the premium. That is the reason why you have to read the labels. So the soy protein, avoid it. If you have if you're vegan and just cannot eat animal proteins, probably then try out one of those um, nuts proteins instead of soya protein. But I myself personally think that uh, our digestive tract is uh, designed to eat meat, but if you're vegan, at least eat some nut protein. So here we are. To recoup, um, we started with the uh, V concentrate and then we went uh, into the uh, more refined versions of it, so it digested and absorbs quicker. Uh, then we mentioned casein protein, the one that's uh, like whole grain, like whole meal of the protein world to, uh, which you would take uh, before going to bed when your muscles repair themselves. Then the uh, also mention the fact that avoid the soy protein and if you are a vegan then you know uh, then at least eat nut uh, proteins nut, nut powders so I hope that really uh, gave you an idea and uh, clarified all this confusion about the proteins and now the next time you go to that supplement uh, shop or Go and look online and so on. At least you will know what you want. Alright then. Have a great body. See you next time.